Hello and welcome to the Petersburg National Battlefield panel on African American archaeological landscapes. My name is Jonah Delasanta and I'm an archaeological analyst at the Northeast Archaeological Resources Program. This panel was organized by Alexis Morris, archaeologist at Petersburg, and myself, and we've invited several panelists from different parks and areas of expertise within Interior Region 1. This panel is part of a larger October Archaeology Month celebration taking place across Petersburg and NARP Facebook and Instagram pages. Uh, but let's begin by introducing our panelists. Starting with Alexis, uh, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and the extent of archaeology done at the site or park? that your conversation will focus on today? More than uh, happy to do that. So once again, my name is Alexis Morris. I'm the archaeologist at Petersburg National Battlefield. Uh, we are currently doing work at the White Hill uh, enslaved field quarters. Uh, we have done a phase one of that project, and currently we're looking and analyzing that information to do our phase two. Uh, we have been particularly interested in looking at this site as one, it has had ARPA violations across it, and we've realized that we, one, do not have the uh, baseline information to know the boundary of the site and the extent of the site to even understand damage that was done to it. Um, in addition to that, we also, in, in looking into this ARPA, realize that this site actually is way more than just a place that has had damage, an archaeological site that has been damaged, but we don't know much about it. Um, and we do not have many sites like this in uh, in our boundaries that we interpret interpret as far as enslavement um, landscapes. Primarily our, our stories of uh, African-American people at Petersburg mostly are interpreted at our City Point Appomattox Manor site. Uh, and then a little, little, um, little bit of interpretation as far as the US colored troops who fought uh, at Petersburg. Uh, but other than that, we, we have realized that there overall has been uh, little interpretation of African Americans within the park. Some histories we know there are of free black uh, or citizens who were living there, as well as those who were enslaved by many plantation owners that we have within our, our boundaries. And our hopes with uh, the White Hill site uh, is that we can bring more, more people to know about the story of the enslaved people who worked for Charles Friend at White Hill, um, and and uh, it, and also incorporate within that story uh, the ideas from the local descendant community, uh, as well as doing some genealogical work, um, and just having these larger conversations of how this this site should be interpreted in collaboration with the public. Okay, thank you, Alexis. Uh, so from Cedar uh, Cedar Creek and Bell Grove, uh, we have Kyle Rothamich and Matthew Greer. Let's start with Kyle. Great. Thanks, Jonah. Uh, thanks for the invitation to take part in this really important panel um, to talk about the work that I think all of our great colleagues are doing uh, throughout Region 1. So my name is Kyle. I am the uh, Historian and Cultural Resources Manager at Cedar Creek and Bell Grove uh, National Historical Park. We're located uh, in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia. And I think I bring an interesting perspective because I'm not an archaeologist. Uh, you know, I am a historian by training, um, but responsible for managing you know, our archaeological resources, among uh, other things such as historic structures. Uh, I want to mention, too, that we are a partnership park, so we work closely with our key legislative partners uh, to not only, you know, preserve resources, but provide interpretive um, services and other, you know, information to help our partners tell this, this story as well. So um, as far as archaeological work done in the past, you know, we're a new park in the sense of the Park Service, been around since 2002. Um, a lot of the work done was by non-professional archaeologists. Uh, so it's really only been in the last probably 10 years or so that uh, we've been able to do archaeology up to what we would consider park service standards. Um, so we've done everything from you know random testing ahead of infrastructure projects. Uh, but recently, working with our partners at Bell Grove Plantation and, and Matt Greer, uh, supporting archaeology done to identify um, some enslaved quarters uh, within the park boundary and, and the stories that they tell. Uh, because one of the things that the park and our partners and our interpretive staff are combating is the myth that, you know, slavery didn't exist in the Shenandoah Valley. Or if it did, it wasn't that bad. Uh, so using archaeology and some of the resources um, to help combat that, uh, we found, and as we'll talk, has been very challenging, but also very rewarding as well. Um, so with that, I'd like to, you know, pass it on to Matt. 
Hi, my name is Matt Greer. I am a PhD candidate at Syracuse University and a pre-doctoral fellow at the Carter G. Woodson Institute for African American and African Studies at University of Virginia. And my dissertation research focuses on enslaved life at Bell Grove Plantation, which is again part of the Cedar Creek and Bell Grove National Historical Park. All right, thank you so much. Uh, next up uh, from Colonial National Historic Park, I'd like to introduce uh, Dwayne uh, Shine and Chardet Reed. Dwayne, can you start, please? Sure. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Dwayne Scheid. I'm the Cultural Resource Program Manager at Colonial National Historical Park, and um, I'm also serving in that role at Fort Monroe National Monument and the Captain John Smith Chesapeake National Historic Trail, where we have one unit um, from where Wacomico, which was Howitton's Village in 1607. Um, and so the park has many, uh, includes several sections and several units, including the Yorktown Battlefield, um, but also Jamestown Island and the Colonial Parkway. Um, the park has um, taken an active role in public outreach and trying to work with the African American community, um, but essentially on Jamestown Island um, in approximately 2016. Um, Jamestown Rediscovery, who is one of our partner groups, came forward with the idea of they proposed to look for the landscape of Angela, um, who was one of the first, one of the first, not the first, one of the first Africans um, brought to the U.S. Um, by English, by the English. Um, and so that project has continued for three years. Um, we've since stopped working on the archaeology, um, and part of that is because um, the, the site location is not actually threatened, but most of the island, uh, Jamestown Island, is threatened by sea level rise. Um, and so that's pushed us to sort of think broader about looking for the African-American population on the island and doing some projects. So we have several upcoming projects, um, our, several upcoming archaeological projects on the island uh, related to both sea level rise, but also looking for that African-American presence on the island. Um, in addition to the archaeology that's taken place there, and, and the way we were looking at it is the archaeology was basically the first step of sort of a large outreach project that includes um, working with the African-American community in, community and outreach um, and you know, discussing with them ideas um, about, you know, what needs to happen at the Angela site, what they would like to happen at the Angela site, what they would like to happen across Colonial. Um, and, and so... In addition to that work, you know, in, in, in that work, one of the outcomes was during one of those public meetings was a member of the community at um, community in Yorktown called Slabtown or Uniontown, which was a, a African American neighborhood that was founded basically during the Civil War when Union troops occupied Yorktown, um, escaped slaves and free blacks came and started settling by Yorktown in order to um, be protected basically. Um, and that community lasted through through the Park Service's founding at, at, at Colonial in 1930. Um, and, uh, and then the Park Service has a history of sort of um, uh, displacing those residents and their businesses and their churches, you know, and basically moving them off of the off of the battlefield. Um, and so in 2013, the Park Service really started or Colonial really started like trying to tell that story. Um, and so since then, we've done um, a bunch of world history collection, and we've been working with the community to sort of tell that story. Um, Charday Reed is, was um, a staff member at James Conry Discovery, I believe, for a while, and, um, and has done some internships and um, programs with the National Park Service. And so she's been critical to the sort of archaeology work that's happened at Jamestown um, with the Angela site. So. As Dwayne said, for uh, the last few years, I've been a uh, first Africans fellow for Jamestown Rediscovery Foundation and an archaeological intern um, for the National Park Service uh, to really directly work with community members on preserving the history and interpreting the archaeology at um, the Angela site on Jamestown Island. This project has been extremely rewarding to me both professionally and uh, personally, um, because Jamestown for so long, for many of um, the local residents of the Williamsburg 
Yorktown, Hampton Roads area has really been seen as a site that has not been for African Americans. Many of them describe it as a site for um, middle age, you know, white people or middle income white people. Um, so being able to actually um, tell these stories about people um, who look like me, who look like them, um, has been pretty transform transformational um, to the site um, and to, I think, the National Park Service's relationship to many community members um, that live in this area. So again, thank you for the invitation. I'm excited to have this conversation. All right, thank you both. Um, next up, uh, representing Harriet and Tubman National Historic Park, uh, I'd like to invite Jessica Bowes to speak. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Um, yep, my name is Jessica Bowes. I am actually employed at Fort Stanwix National Monument as a museum technician, um, but I have my background, a master's degree in historical archaeology from UMass Boston, and I'm working on my um, PhD dissertation at Syracuse University on archaeology at the Harriet Tubman home in Auburn, New York. Um, Harriet Tubman National Historical Park is a relatively new partner park. It was established in 2017 um, in partnership with a nonprofit, Harriet Tubman Home Inc. And that nonprofit has been managing um, and taking care of that site for most of the 20th century since Harriet Tubman was alive. Um, and so the National Park Service relationship to this is relatively new. Um, and I had the uh, fortune to serve as one of the first park rangers there temporarily um, in 2018. Um, and I continue to assist the park with any um, interpretation needs they may have or anything related to cultural resources that may arise.